Hey everyone, it's Sean. I'm going to do a quickie little Kato Unitrack HO scale review since I don't see any on YouTube. And I'm still looking into using this stuff for building my next layout and continuing this one. I spent about $125 on four, let's see, two switches, electric number sixes, one left, one right. I bought two little uh they're like the powered rail joiners uh Kato has them special for them because they have to replace these little guys here which can be a pain to solder I guess I was recommended I was highly recommended from the hobby shop and several people to buy them we get four 14 and a half inch straight pieces those two packets of wired rail joiners and I got another freight car here for about 125 bucks. Now, this track sounds really good, really high quality. The switches are really nice. The rail is realistic. It's not like overly thick or tall like Code 100 and even 83 can be. I'm sure that's what this is, but it just looks clean as compared to, say, some Pico track. Which you can compare here. Um, Tires don't have as much of a sheen to them. The rail seems to be a little bit cleaner, a little bit shorter, possibly. Um, so it does look better, looks good, ballast looks good. Um, may not be up to some people's standards, but hey, this is my layout. Um, so I'll do a little demo here, quick for you. And even though these are electric switches, they just have a little throw on them that you can do here. I'm going to show you a cool little trick. Now notice I'm throwing this in the wrong direction. So it's lined to go ahead. And this is one thing that no one told me about, but it's got to be very nice to have. I've even checked this with some light freight cars. It won't derail. And that's pretty damn convenient. Now these switches are not power routing, so if I have this switch thrown to go this way, this one will go this way, <clears throat> there's no power here. Likewise, if I try to go like this to line up for that way and that one this way, there's no power here. See? Nothing. Now if I throw this switch here, it goes. And I can go back. Now I know some things some people are uh, concerned about, especially with like these Broadway Limited cars, is how they go over the switch together. Now I'll put these two guys together. Now I'll roll them over both switches. I don't have the double uh, or the crossover, but I'm probably going to order it soon for testing. But they go just fine. Nice and smooth until I push it over the edge. But they work really well. Get that bridge out of the way here. Alright, so nice and smooth. Clean transition.
And as you see, that's all the play there is between the cars going back and forth. Just isn't a lot. Over my switches over here, there's a little bit more. Uh, let's compare what I do with them. I've got some Pico switches here. We've got a medium right or short right and a long right, which I believe is a number four and a number six in Pico. Now, to compare that, or excuse me, a medium left, to compare that to a Kato now. The switch is overall a bit shorter, so they are the number sixes in Kato are a little bit larger. Get everything lined up here. Yeah, the number six is a little bit larger with a slightly larger radius, and I have no doubts that this thing will swallow up my Broadway Limited 2104 without a single problem. That's mostly why I want to go to this stuff, because even the larger Pico. I've got problems with my 2104 and that's not a huge locomotive um, there are 412 2s and 212 2s out there that would cause some serious trouble on those large Picos so this is a very welcomed well I don't know what to call it but it's very welcomed it's nice to have and while I'm here, I might as well do a little review of these guys here real quick. So I'll turn the power on again. Turn the lights on. I don't know if you can see them. There you go. Alright. <clears throat> these are the Broadway Limited Zephyr cars. I have three of them that are unlettered. I've got the dome observation with the antenna. The dome lounge. And then over here, I've got the baggage, which is not lit. Uh, so far they run okay. On the Pico they have a little trouble, but I've got, uh, I think, a 26 inch radius. And I was told, and well I should say warned when I bought these, that they're not going to run perfect. And if I'm expecting perfection, I'm going to be disappointed. So I expected something akin to Walther's, which the commuter cars work okay. The Bud cars work, eh. The Pullman Santa cars work awesome. Never had trouble with them. The Hiawatha cars work awesome. Never had trouble with those. The Fox Valley cars are great unless you're trying to back up, which they might give you some trouble. But these guys so far work good. The lighting is pretty consistent. The only thing I might do is put a capacitor in it so they don't flicker when you go over dirty spots and switches. But they seem to go pretty good. They're smooth, quiet. The interiors are lit, very well detailed. I don't know if you'll be able to see in there a little bit but the interiors are pretty nice uh, you can see in the dome here I'm going to put people in here this is going to be my private business train um, so I'm going to put BNSF reporting marks on here the modern ones that you'd see on their business train and uh, I don't know I guess paint up some figures as my friends. I hope they make a big hairy German guy that has an afro. Because i got to have my best friend. And what's nice is the baggage has the little shades in it. I'll put that in with the other cars just so you can see what they look like together. I had originally planned to purchase the whole set. But they're not all available and I'm not paying list price. Not going to happen. So I'll just, as I can find them... I'll buy them, but I'm not going to be in a huge hurry. So here they are. They look pretty good. They sound pretty good, so hopefully they'll run well. And because I've got probably 70 passenger cars, most of Milwaukee Road, I'll put my buy levels on here because that'll be the making of my business train. Because I have or at least had a slight obsession with bi-level cars for some reason. I had a whole fleet of about 40 of them together at one point. And I moved to Madison for college and decided, oh, I'm going to get into N-Scale. So let me just sell all my 
HO stuff and abandon, sorry about that, abandon everything I love. So I sold everything but a couple of commuter cars, these are not them, they're somewhere else lost in the abyss of our basement. And I bought a few of these and some other stuff and basically restarted my collection from the ground up. I lost thousands of dollars. I recommend if you plan on switching scales, please do hold on to your dearest items. Please think it thoroughly through what you really need out of this hobby. Don't go overboard. Don't buy more than what you need. I've got enough to run two good sized layouts in a 400 or 500 square foot room, or even a, well, I should say a thousand square foot room, and have two layouts from the transition area in Milwaukee Road to today. Easily. Fill up that room with two different layouts with everything. And I don't need it all. But here it is. Um, overall, thumbs up on the Cato track. It's expensive, yes. Is it worth it? So far, it seems like it'll be that way. Just don't be in a rush. Buy a little bit at a time. I bought enough here to do a, a passing sighting. Sadly enough, because I did not buy the box set, I am missing an oddball little piece that I do not have. So I am about a half an inch shy of having a complete passing sighting, so I just did this little guy. Um, so if you're doing it in modules like the Modurail system, or you're just going to build your layout like a section at a time, like say this little section here and a little section there. And go around a little bit at a time. You could do this relatively on a, on a good budget. Um, I budget somewhere between $50 and $150 a month depending on what is planned for that month to trains. Uh, this month I went a little bit overboard because of the N-Scale convention this week in Milwaukee but that happens I haven't spent any money on trains in a while so but let me know what you think if you have any questions um, I'll be buying more track in the coming months I'm not gonna be in a hurry because I have other stuff that's coming in I've got new locomotives 3-8 CW's BNSF Atlas um, a gen set BNSF the new gen 2 from Atlas uh, a couple other transfer cabooses, among other things, coming in. So, and a Sperry Rail service car. So, thumbs up if you like the videos, or just this one. If you have any questions, let me know. Comments, subscribe. Um, tips, tricks, anything helpful with Cato Track, let me know. I'll put it in my video, I'll put it to good use, and I'll let you know how things go. So far everything looks, everything looks like it's going to stack up and work out with this. I really, another big thing is I like the spacing in the tracks. It's not too much, it's not too little. You could put a little platform in between there for a station. Works great. Talked to a bunch of N-Scale guys today. And I think every layout there out of like, I think, probably close to two dozen layouts. And just about all of them have or have used Unitrack. And they swear by it, so... Thumbs up on that stuff. Hopefully I'll have more for you later and I'll be using my DCC to see how it works on here if those switches are compatible and such. But until next time, take care and happy modeling.